I'm Pontus Westerberg and I'm coordinator of Block by Block, which is um, a global program where we use Minecraft as a community participation tool in uh, public space programs. Uh, we run participatory workshops with communities all over the world where um, they get to use Minecraft uh, to redesign their urban areas, particularly focusing on, on public spaces. Minecraft is one of the world's biggest um, computer games. Um, it's essentially like digital Lego. Uh, you get blocks, multicolored blocks that are one by one by one meter cube. Um, and in an endless world, you can basically design what, whatever you want. Um, it's used by, it has something like 100 million players. And I think it's the world's uh, third ever most popular video games after Tetris and, and, and Wii Sports. Community is fantastic. They work all together on multiplayer servers, and they'll build fantastic stuff. Everything from King's Landing, from Game of Thrones, to um, Paris or, or New York. So it's, it becomes kind of an architectural tool almost for, um, for for young people mainly. I mean, I work at UN Habitat, and we have this global program where we are improving public spaces all over the world. And when we do these kind of building projects then community participation becomes really important. So we run all sorts of participatory processes. Um, but generally, it's quite difficult to get young people involved in these, in these processes. So when we heard of Minecraft, I think it was the summer of, of 2012, we thought this really seemed like a, a, good, uh, a good tool. Um, and we basically contacted Mojang, which is the company that makes Minecraft, and they were super interested in having a partnership. So for the last three years, we've been, um, we've been working together um, on this program, uh, Block by Block. I mean, in the context of, of Block by Block, it's about um, ensuring that marginalized communities are able to actually actively engage in these processes. Um, often we find that, that poor people or young people or women um, in kind of normal participatory processes, their voices are not always heard. So finding a really useful tool like Minecraft um, means that we can um, your voice to the to the voiceless in a sense and it's about changing the power relationships as well to ensure that non-professionals can really participate in these kind of processes. When it comes to Minecraft um, we're really interested in moving into a bigger scale so what we're doing at the moment is um, manually building spaces uh, we work with with a bunch of gamers who will basically manually build our, our Minecraft models um, but it's quite resource intensive to do it in a manual way so we're exploring different ways that we can use, for example, JS data or other open data sets to kind of bring them into Minecraft to generate urban areas on a, on a larger scale. Um, really see a lot of, of potential of kind of bringing JS data from different kind of formats into Minecraft, doing um, visualization, doing community participation, and then bringing them out into other kind of CAD programs. And I think that has a, a lot of potential. Um, outside of, of Minecraft, um, I'm really interested in, uh, in citizen science and citizen observatories. Um, thinking about how kind of smart cities, if you, I'm not super fond about the term, but if you're thinking about digital technology within cities, um, what happens a lot is that you get kind of top-down uh, approaches. And I think that um, different citizen science or citizen observatory type processes can, can bring you more bottom-up, uh, bottom-up, um, uh, bottom approach to, to, to tech in, in cities. So for example, um, last year we have been testing uh, a maintenance uh, system of, of sensors, water sensors in a slum in, in Nairobi uh, using, using uh, input from local residents. So one of the things with, with sensors is that we've been installing water sensors in, in Mathare and one of the issues with, with sensors is that they need um, battery change quite, quite often. Um, in a slum that could be Quite, quite difficult to do. We've been working in partnership with the water company and they don't always feel that they have that kind of access to the slum as they would like to. So we've been testing a, a community model where um, citizens in the slum are maintaining these sensors and changing the batteries and these kind of things in return for, for micro payments. Um, and I think this kind of citizen observer type model can have a, a, a huge potential impact for, uh, for smart cities. There's a really interesting uh, initiative by the Fab Lab uh, network where, where they're using a, um, um, a kind of sensor uh, box, I would call it, which is called the Smart Citizen Kit. Um, similar kind of thing that you give this kit to, to lots of different citizens across the city and they can do um, 
different kind of readings. It could be air quality, it could be noise pollution, it could be temperature and this kind of thing. And then you can, with the help of citizens, you can start building up a, a, a picture of, of how the city functions. It's kind of a nice, interesting counter to, for example, um, you know, top-down, private sector-led uh, big data initiatives. Uh, I think these can complement each other quite well. Working in, in civic technology uh, in, in lots of different ways, I'm always really interested in learning from other practitioners and researchers and, and, and so on. So I think a conference like TikTok is a really good opportunity to, to do that.